Well, it all comes down to this rotation. We've put in six, seven weeks now uh, to get ourselves into a uh, position to go for the summit. We've been training for months, if not years, for this opportunity. Uh, it all comes down to this. A bit of nerves, a lot of fatigue. Uh, our bodies have just been pushed to the limits over the last six weeks or so at altitude. Uh, but we're, we're there, we're ready to go for it. Summit day is potentially the most dangerous day of the expedition, with exposure to hazards like acute altitude illness, frostbite, fatigue, exposure, potential falls and traffic jams. Experienced guidance here is critical. You can expect Summit Day to take anywhere between 6 to 12 hours on the ascent, depending on pace and traffic, and as a general rule, half of that time to return to the coal. It is helpful to think of Summit Day as an extended push from Camp 3, with a period of time resting at the South Coal in the afternoon and early evening on oxygen, before the Summit bid begins in earnest later that same night. We depart the South Coal for the summit in the dark to take advantage of the calmest part of the day, avoid bottlenecks, and given the sheer length of the climb, we need all the hours we can get. The easiest climbing of the day is up to the first landmark, the balcony, which takes three to four hours. Here's what the last push into the balcony, 27,000 feet looks like during the day. Uh, I didn't take any video at night because you can't really see much. Anyway, that's looking up at 27,000 feet. And then from there, you bang a left and head up towards the cell summit. And now the true summit just starting to open up over there again. Gnarly knife fetch ridge. To get an idea of the pitch of this leg, let's look back down. This is the route up to the balcony. The first, the first half of summit day. On Everest, you can see the South Call tents down below. Some people working their way up the Lotsi face, and you can see the Lotsi Kular all the way to the summit right there. The balcony is the best break spot en route to the summit, so most people stop here for a sip and a snack and to change oxygen bottles. Here's the crew, chilling at the balcony. The next stretch to the south summit is usually three hours with some short, steep rock steps before a long ridge climb. From the south summit, you will finally see the famed Cornice Traverse, the Hillary Step, and the final slope to the summit. The route narrows beyond the south summit with huge exposure on either side, which can cause bottlenecking. The wind here is also something to plan for, to avoid your oxygen mask and your eyes freezing. Most famously, the Hillary Step is the last significant obstacle on the way to the summit. The step changed in the 2015 earthquake from a vertical rock pitch to a more forgiving and gradual slope that it is today. A short 20 minute traverse and you will find yourself literally on top of the world. Everest. It's a huge physical and mental undertaking which requires a single-minded focus. But you will find each step of its 8,850 metres life-changing. <laughs>